Hello, my name is Gabriel and I have what they call schizophrenia. So I know it's been a, over a week since I've posted my last video and it was a, a song that I sung over. And I'm sorry for the absence. I just um, need a bit of time to myself. And uh, sometimes when you're doing really good, uh, it's kind of hard to talk about certain mental health topics because you don't have access to some of the things going on, if that makes sense. But today I've, I've had, um, I was all right, but I had a bit of a, uh, an issue. And what I've been noticing is, sorry if water just dripped off my beard or just, uh, brushed my teeth. But, um, what I've been noticing is, is I've been very emotional the last couple of days and very sensitive to voices but I'm starting to learn that if these voices had a consciousness of their own they feed off of fear and anger so I've noticed to make the voices go away I have to stop getting angry at them and I definitely cannot fear them because I do think that they're hallucinations, but you got to kind of see them as real in order to do any growth, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I just hallucinated a leg right beside me. It's really weird. But yeah, mentally wise, I'm way better than I was last year. Um, things are working out pretty good. But I've gotten so well that when I have like a, a symptom, it freaks me out because it makes me think I'm going backwards. I believe that we can have hypochondria towards physical health and mental health. And I have a lot of hypochondria towards my mental health. Because if I hallucinate or feel something touch me like I am right now, I think that I'm going backwards. But I'm not because... A year ago, I would hallucinate all day, every day, and I wasn't able to focus. And I'd be having panic attacks where I could hear my heart racing. And I thought it was the voices causing it. But, um, another thing I realized is, it seems that we hallucinate, as people with schizophrenia, we hallucinate when we think about the word hallucination. I don't know if, I don't know if any of you can relate to that. Um, if you can, just, uh, let me know in the comments. Because it seems like, in my opinion, whenever I notice or remember that I have schizophrenia, whenever I remember it, that's when I start hallucinating. I only hallucinate when I'm aware that I could hallucinate. It's like the antis anticipation of hallucination, of hallucinating, makes me hallucinate. Now, if somebody went into my brain and removed the memory that I was schizophrenic, and removed every memory I have of hallucinating, I really do think that I wouldn't hallucinate anymore. I feel like the more we do something, the easier easier it is to do it. So the more I hallucinate, the more easier it becomes to hallucinate. It's, uh, I don't know if, it's kind of like working out a muscle. So if you're lifting weights, your muscle slowly gets stronger. And it becomes easier to pick something heavy up. So the first day of lifting weights, you might be able to lift 10 pounds, but you're trying to lift 50 pounds and you can't do it. But then the more you lift weights, the easier it becomes to lift 50 pounds. And that's what I feel like it's like with schizophrenia is we hallucinate because it's become easy for us to hallucinate. And the more easier it becomes... And the more we hallucinate, the easier it becomes to hallucinate, if you know what I mean. I don't, I'm sure there's people out there that can relate that the second you think about the word hallucination, you start hallucinating. Can't just be me. But, um, yeah, last year was hectic. 2020 was a horrible year. And 2021 was pretty decent. But I'm really looking forward to 22. 2022, because... 
2020 was fucked up for everybody on the planet. Let's just, let's be honest here. It was messed up. Um, like, I always heard stories and like, uh, like conspiracy theories, I guess you can call them, about the year 2020. And then when 2020 came, everything went to shit. It's so fucking weird. And then I went into psychosis in the summer of 2020. I finally started getting out of it. I would say around September, but I was still in psychosis, but I was creeping out of it. And, you know, I get really uh, freaked out when I hallucinate. Even like I know it was way way bad way worse last year. It was way worse. But like the idea of something touching my head like this or something tickling my back or just annoying voices. Like I it my voice the voice I hear is like the voice of like a girl. And it's almost like she's a child, I don't forget, I don't know her age, it's just, she acts like a child, she repeats the same phrase over and over again when I hallucinate, and I hope this video doesn't, like, make people view me as, like, uh, some guy that hallucinates, because I don't want to manifest that kind of thing, like, I believe in the law of attraction, and I believe, like, if a million people believe you to be a certain way, then that's how you'll be, it's kind of like the people manifest it for you so i really hope that this video doesn't kind of like make me hallucinate more i know it sounds crazy but i don't know if any of you guys are into the law of attraction comment below let me know but yeah i'm doing a lot better than i was last year and i'm thankful for it but sometimes i forget how hard it was last year i like i could hallucinate and think that I'm literally going into psychosis again. Because I have like PTSD from it. And it really sucks. But uh. Yeah sometimes I debate going to the hospital. But it's like what what could they do for me? What could they do for me? I'm like. I'm on 475 milligrams of clozapine. I'm on 100 milligrams of Syracol. I mean. Clozapine goes up to like eight or 900. But. I don't know. It seems like, in my opinion, and I'm just being real, I feel like, and it's probably not actually real, but it seems every time I raise my clozapine, I feel better for a few days, and then it's like I gain a tolerance to the dose, I to the dose I'm on, and then I need to raise it again to get that same satisfaction that I felt the first few days. I don't want to be chasing a number forever because, like, when I can't raise it anymore, like, what do I do? Um, my doctor told me that you have to learn to live with some symptoms. It's not about making all the hallucinations go away, but it's actually about getting them down to a point where it doesn't bother you. And, like, if I didn't have tactile hallucinations, it probably wouldn't bother me as much. But how can you ignore something touching your head? You know what I mean? How can you ignore something touching your back and whispering in your ear? I mean, you can't ignore the elephant in the room. Even if it was just the voices, I'd probably feel a lot better. But like the tactile hallucinations, what really sucks is I can't find anyone on the internet who has tactile hallucinations. So I'm hoping there's somebody out there who does have tactile hallucinations because they're not fun. Like, literally, some, like, if you're, imagine sitting there really angry, right? Because this voice won't shut up. And something touches your head like this and says, it's okay. But it's, the thing saying it's okay is the voice that made you angry. It's like it's constantly tormenting you and teasing you. And, like, making fun of the fact that you're angry. It's like, so I've learned that I have to not be angry. Because this voice apparently feeds off anger and fear feeds off anger and fear so if i can not be angry at the voice and obviously not fear the voice and just learn to accept the fact that it's going to be there then i'll be just fine because 
the voice will eventually go away if I stop. The thing is, if I really want something, if I'm desperate, if I'm desperate and I want a voice to go away or a hallucination to go away, that desperate energy is going to make it stay longer. But if I accept the, that I'm going to have that hallucination, then I'll stop manifesting it because it seems like we get the opposite of what we think is hard to reach. So if I think it's hard to stop hallucinating this voice, that's what I'm going to get. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stay hard. But if I accept it and not care, then maybe the hallucination will go away. And I think it's all about uh, mindset too. But yeah, I have, I guess I would say three or four types of hallucinations like I obviously have auditory, I have tactile, and sometimes, but not all the time, I can I hallucinate visuals for like a second. Like I'll see a leg, like I did earlier in this video, or I'll see like a cat, or I don't know. And sometimes I'll see like white lines floating around, or... If, like, I stare at the ceiling, whoops, if I stare at the ceiling, I'll see, like, uh, white, white blobs, and it's kind of like when you look into a light bulb for 10 seconds, and then look away, you see, like, a light, a uh, little light thing floating around. It's kind of like that, but without looking in the light bulb. <sighs> but, yeah. There's three hobbies, I would say, of mine. Maybe four. Number one is helping you guys. Helping let people know that they're not alone. Uh, number two is making music. Number three is writing books. I'm working on a fiction novel about a drug dealer. It's a made up character, but there's about 77 pages written. And I'm going to start adding like uh, pictures into it and stuff. So yeah, helping people, making music, uh, writing books and yeah I don't know that's about it but I do have a drive to get more healthier I understand that there's loads of room for improvement and I'm positive in that way I'm really happy because I know for a fact the max dose of clozapine is like 900 milligrams and I'm on 475 so, if the 475 got rid of, like, I would say since uh, a year ago, my hallucinations are down to at least 80%. So, if I went double the dose that I'm on, or almost double, the hallucinations would probably be completely gone. That's my theory. So there's lots of room for improvement. Um, but my doctor he doesn't want to raise my dose of clozapine because, and I quote, he says that on high doses you can have seizures. But like, I don't want seizures either, but at the same time, it's like, there's lo where are you getting this info from? There's loads of people who are on 900 milligrams of clozapine and don't have seizures. And I know he just doesn't want to get sued or in trouble or whatever, but, you know, there's room for improvement. One thing I'm looking forward forward to is uh, winter's coming. That might sound stupid because when it snows, you can't really go anywhere. But I'm excited for the first snowfall. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And, yeah, there's quite a few things I'm looking forward to in the future. Um, number one, I guess, would be getting better. Number two, getting my driver's license. That'll be pretty cool. And getting a car. And just, you know, being at peace with myself. Because mo most of the time I am. And uh, another thing I like to do is I like to read books sometimes so I got a book called uh, 
Well, it's a Nostr it's a Nostradamus book. It's not written by Nostradamus, but if you don't know, Nos Nostradamus was a a guy from the fifteen hundreds, I think, who was able to see into different realms and see into the future. And he written down all of his prophecies and predictions in code because the reason he did it in code was back then it would be deemed as witchcraft. If he predicted something and, and it came true, it would be deemed as witchcraft and he would uh, get put to jail or killed or whatever. So he read it all in code and then he's predicted 9-11. He's predicted the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. Like, he predicted pretty much everything that happened in 2020. And I know this for a fact, and I know nobody's making it up, because I watched a video on 2020 predictions by Nostradamus in 2019. And then 2020 happened, and I went back to that video, and I remembered it all. I read read all the predictions, and they were exactly accurate to 2020. So I know that wherever that came from, it, they do have the ability to see into the future, so that's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. My hand feels really weird. I think it's from holding the phone. Yeah, I have hypochondria about my physical health, too. Like, I'll, uh, if I'll get weird sensations in my hands or feet, and I'll think I'm dying of, like, heart attack or a stroke. But I know it's not logical. But yeah, so, not much else to talk about. Basically what I do in the day to keep myself occupied, I play Flight Simulator, I sometimes read, uh, sometimes make music, sometimes make a video like this one, uh, which I should do more often, and today I might uh, work on my book, depends on the mood. But yeah, that's about it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If any of you have tactile hallucinations out there, let me know. Um, I know I can't be the only one. Um, I'd say tactile and visuals would be the worst hallucinations. Because you can't ignore something touching you. With an with a auditory hallucination, you can play music and then you can't hear the voice. But what... What can I do to ignore something touching my head? Do I just do this all day to ignore it? I mean, it's really stupid. But yeah, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, try and stay positive. Good times are coming for all of us. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think I already said that. And yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe. And I will see you in another video. My name is Gabriel and I have what they call schizophrenia. Thank you.